Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a presentation about infrastructure as code. Uh, this is a presentation I gave at Cloud Austin in September, and I'm recording it now because I wanted to give people a chance to see and hear a clean, a clean take if you couldn't be there in person. Uh, so I'm going to bring in a video of me so you get to watch me talk. It, it sometimes adds a little color as you can see me wave my hands. Um, but the idea here is that I wanted to talk about infrastructure of code uh, because this really ingen generates a lot of passion in people. They, they have very specific ideas of what infrastructure as code means and it's all over the world, all over the map. Uh, we had a great discussion about this the night that I gave the presentation, uh, which came from a great discussion before that, uh, a couple of months before, and then some tw heated Twitter arguments about what infrastructure as code means. And this is my take. So I, I hope you'll enjoy it. And I want to tell you right up front, uh, this is based on the five years we spent at RackN building Digital Rebar, which is an infrastructure as code platform. It, it didn't start out that way. Uh, it's something we realized that we built because we were trying to solve a problem. And so a lot of this presentation is about the insights that we've gained over the years. And no apologies, it's vendored from that perspective because it's our insights in building a product. Um, if you want to buy that product, great. If not, there's a ton of things that we learned about what it takes to build infrastructure as code and, and the decisions that we made in building that architecture. This is the closest you're going to get to real behind the scenes of why we built what we built and how we built it. So hope you enjoy it. This is infrastructure as code. And that's it. It's YAML. No, it's not. But some people would tell you that it was. And so I wanted to start from this perspective. We can just look at it from that perspective from the YAML perspective and say, hey, I've codified my infrastructure and I'm done. Reality is, is really very different. Um, when people talk about infrastructures to code, they get very passionate. They see this gleaming robot automation army that's gonna make their data centers run as if by magic. If you talk to vendors, uh, it's a really friendly, nice concept that's just gonna clean up the world and make it a better place and the reality is very far away from that. The tools are fragmented. It's very hard to use. Um, it doesn't do what people really want it to be able to do. And so it's worth talking about what infrastructure as code means. Uh, from Racken's perspective, we started building infrastructure as code based on our core business, which is bare metal automation. So we really focus, we are focused exclusively on fixing data center automation from the physical layer up. RAID, BIOS, server lifecycle, laying down an operating system, not a virtualization platform or hyper-converged infrastructure, actually automating servers using out-of-band management and net booting and things like that. Uh, and there's a lot of challenges about that that we're going to lay out in this talk. Um, but the number one thing we learned is that every data center was different. And there's all snowflakes. And so what we wanted to be able to do is create a way to have repeatable success so that something that worked in one person's data center could be reused and reduce the overall toil from running a data center because everybody's doing the same stuff. They're just not doing it in ways they can share it. And that's really what we wanted to fix. And to fix that, we had to build Digital Rebar, which is our infrastructure as code platform. And what that comes down to is me bringing back the video for you making sure it stays on top, is that infrastructure as code is really seen from two different perspectives. And they're, they're very different perspectives, and that's part of the reason the discussions go off the rail. There's a IAC, the infrastructure of code, from a dev perspective, which works from the applications down and relies on you having the infrastructure uh, as a service or some other platform. And then there's an infrastructure as code from the ops perspective, which typically works like what we're doing for building an infrastructure up from the very bottom. And then that usually drives to a platform as a service where you're trying to get to a VMware or a Kubernetes infrastructure and then be happy with that. So there is sort of this middle ground, but they're very different perspectives. When we look at the way the market is structured, that means that we see a couple of different models in this that are, that are important. Um, one of the things is the sort of this Terraform model, and Terraform's been doing a great job messaging IAC uh, and helping define it in a lot of ways. Uh, but that's really from a dev perspective, and it relies on you having a programmable API. What we do with Digital Rebar, there is no APIs. It's bare metal. It's infrastructure. You have to program it. 
Uh, and that leads to a whole bunch of different problems, and I'll, I'll lay out what those are, but it's, it's two different ways to see it. And a lot of what we've been doing is actually making it so that Terraform can work against bare metal and provide an uh, infrastructure as a service uh, platform against which you can do other types of automation, and that's perfectly fine. It's how, how things need to go. So let's break infrastructure's code down into, into six component parts uh, that'll help us sort of break, break apart this bigger idea of you know, beautiful robotic automation of our data centers into tangible things that we can deliver. Uh, the first is YAML, uh, programmable config. So I can describe what I want in a, in a file that's human readable and machine readable, and then use that to describe my data center. Um, and that's great, but it, it's not very complete. It just tells you what, what's there, like a Ansible inventory file. It's out of date the moment you write it, and it's not particularly helpful. To make that work, you need to be able to take that code and use some dynamic infrastructure, so a cloud infrastructure or an infrastructure as a service, something like Kubernetes, where you can say, you know, go maintain, you know, give me dynamic stuff. Some people would tell you uh, Kubernetes is an infrastructure, it's a service manager. Totally agree with you. Still put it on the slide, though. Uh, the next thing in this in this is to talk about Desire State Engine, which is really where Kubernetes would be, what Rebar does, Terraform. Um, a lot of infrastructure's code sort of focuses on this, this one piece. And the idea is that I can give you a YAML file, my, my state description, and then that platform, it goes and builds it. And it makes all the decision, it collects the resource and the infrastructure, it uses APIs to, to actually deliver that. Um, and then ideally, if you make a change to the programmatic config, then the Zyre State Engine is going to fix it so that you have now reconformed. So it's, a, it's an ongoing lifecycle loop. From that, you get into this idea that I don't want to just send you infrastructure as code programmable files. I actually want to deploy from source. And so we get this idea of immutability where we've defined something in source code and that is how we describe it. And then there is no other state. Everything is coming directly from a source code repository in some controlled way, and anything we've built from there is really an immutable artifact. We're not making configurations in the field. Uh, when you do that, you sort of break the whole concept of infrastructure as code because you've, you've changed the configuration of the system. Uh, even Docker files, it's one of the great things about Docker files is I take a file, I describe my Docker file, it goes and builds it, and once I have the Docker containers, I don't configure them, they're just an artifact that I pass around. Image deploy is something um, I've done some talking on in immutable deployments. Also, I've created my image, I deploy it, uh, and then that's it. I don't have to spend a lot of time doing configuration management on that system after it's been instantiated. Composability is a really important concept on top of these because like code, so infrastructure is code, what should be code-like, we want reuse. We want to be able to take objects and models and libraries and, and put them together in building blocks, right? The actual amount of code we should be writing here is relatively small. And so it's important to have composable automation and be able to reuse components as part of this overall infrastructure as code piece. If you end up just writing a long bash file, it's just spaghetti code. That's not reuse. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. And then finally, bringing it all together with the CICD pipeline is really important. So you take all of these pieces and then you actually can create a pipeline where you have version sets and you can make a change to something on one side in your code, your infrastructure's code, and then actually have it automatically deploy through the whole sequence into the system as you want it. Make a change, let it go through the pipeline again. Infrastructure's code, the pipeline ends up being an important part. And the way I see all these things is really as a stack. There's interdependencies where I can go each step and build up this full hierarchy of infrastructure as code. And so if you wanna look at the tools I've talked about, Terraform has some of those features, some of them really well, uh, but it, it counts on dynamic infrastructure to be built. Uh, so if you're trying to do what we do, bare metal automation, you, you don't have, you're missing the control points that you need for that. Um, I give uh, Terraform a partial on the Desire State Engine. It's a new feature that they've come out with in their enterprise version. And so you can actually store state. Um, up until then, Terraform had state files and you had to manage these state files. And it was problematic in ways that I'll talk about as we go into the depths of digital rebar. Uh, and I think composability for Terraform is, is a little bit mixed. You can build up um, modules and providers that, that take on pieces, but a plan is a plan, and you can't sort of take parts of a plan and then stitch things together. Um, 
and that to me is sort of a, a problem. I can't, you know, say, oh, I'm going to borrow somebody's plan and use parts of it in a consistent way. So I'd like to see that to really, in, in my mind, build what infrastructure as code does. And one of the reasons I say that is because what we've built with Digital Rebar has those capabilities. Uh, for Digital Rebar, it really builds this whole stack. Uh, we'll talk about the pipelining at the end. Um, and for dynamic infrastructure, we've been building cloud interface capabilities into the product uh, community is really interested in those types of you know, interface to uh, AWS or uh, VMware or Google or you know, Linode, what have you. Uh, we have some of those built. Um, our priority is really on bare metal and networks, which is stored and compute. Uh, so that's, that's really what infrastructure we typically hook to. Um, you know, it'll uh, make more sense. One of the things I want to bring up, I'm going to use the word infrastructure of code is a, a lot here, um, although I'm going to transition to something else because IAC is really confusing from that perspective. People want it to mean a lot of different things, and so we're confused. Ideally, I'd be using something like software-defined infrastructure or software-defined data center. Those are really co-opted by the uh, VMware, IIS types of uh, discussions or hyper-converged infrastructure. Um, and that's, that's, that's sort of sad. That's what we're talking about is software-defined infrastructure, but uh, we can't use those terms because they mean other things. So we have settled on using this word continuously integrated data center, um, which, yeah, is very similar to continuously integrated continuous deployment CD. In our mind, uh, this is actually more what the concept that people are looking for, the CIDC, where you can get that pipeline and flow all the way through to the bare metal BIOS and actually build your data center from code, from source code. That's what we're building. That's what our, our goals are. And it's really what the, the objectives are here. And so we feel like that phrase really describes the objectives for people for a zero touch, completely automated system. And so it's always important for us to keep that goal in mind as we describe the sort of nuts and bolts of what we've built. So when we look at this CIDC thinking and, and apply it to digital rebar, we can actually go back and build up the system from its parts. And everything I'm gonna show you, you can go play with. Uh, you know, this is something that you can go download and play with, look at all these pieces and parts and sort of have this experience yourself. Uh, I, I can promise you in the next 10 minutes I spent talking about this, we're just scratching the surface and explaining architecture. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting details in the how we do things. Uh, programmatic config here, uh, behind the scenes we're using Golang templates, and, and these configuration files in some cases are configuration, in a lot of cases they're scripts or kickstarts or con you know, uh, files to configure other components that we have done in a programmatic way. It's not just a starting inventory file, it's everything that you configure in the system is driven through a process like that. And it's really important because that gives us a very uh, DSL like experience. So you can define, you can test to see if data is available for you. You can actually do logic where you can say, is this information I know true or false or build very complex uh, case and loops. Um, you can do simple substitution. You can just say, I have this data. I want to inject it into my configuration or kickstart or knowledge, right? So if I know what my NIC is or my interface or my IP address, or it doesn't matter. Any information we collect about the system, you can inject back and do it in a programmatic way. So inside of everything you build, those configuration files are actually programmatically generated in a consistent, repeatable way. Um, and that includes built-in variables. Uh, so you can actually pull data that the system knows inherently back into uh, whatever code you build. So in this case, it's a bash file. You could build PowerShell. You could build Ansible files. You could build uh, Terraform uh, plans. I'm actually building that in uh, it's one of my, my pet projects right now. Uh, and then, um, you know, Kickstarts, Precedes, uh, uh, Cloud Nets, all these things actually can get pressed through the system using the information the system has, which is really the next level up. So when we look at, at the configuration, we have to inject all that information into the system. So Digital Rebar has a state engine that state engine is a service that runs in your data center. So this isn't a file stored on a desktop and then used when you're running the system. It actually is a persistent store. Uh, and that's important because the services that you need to run a data center have to be persistent. You have to be able to pixie boot. You have to be able to offer DHCP. You have to have an API. And there are places where you have 
transitory connections like a web, the web interface or the CLI where you're, you're making a request and it's taking action. But most of the things that, that need are needed for infrastructure as code are long-term persistent connections, like a machine is provisioning. It might take an hour to do a full in install cycle of a lot of interactions. That's a connection where the state of that system has to be maintained across reboots, across op changing the operating system as you collect information. All those things aren't just something you can count on a desktop being available for. You actually have to have a service that's running and providing state. And so that's exactly what we've done with the digital rebar platform. It, it, it's a service that runs in the data center and provides state. And that's important because it's not as simple as just having the CLIs and the machine agents, right? That would be a provisioning system. But what we found for infrastructure as code and CIDC is that you actually have to have a much broader set of integrations. You have to have clients that can consume the integration, right? Ansible and Terraform itself using our APIs or a Kubernetes cluster API with a machine controller, right? You're providing a consistent interface for those clients to consume resources, it's dynamic infrastructure. And also you need to be able to pull and push data from other operation systems, the DNS, out of band management, Ansible Tower if you wanna run a tower job or Active Directory to get credentials. Um, I, the number of things that you have to integrate in to do a full provisioning lifecycle is about 10, sometimes 15 or 16 in, a, in an enterprise with a lot of requirements and ancillary systems. So it's not just a good enough to provision your system and do your one thing. To make infrastructure as code work, you actually have to push and pull data from everything along the workflow train to get that final thing done, right? When you're doing a, a call against Amazon, it talks to a lot of different systems behind the scenes. You're just not worried about it because you get one call. In a data center, when you're provisioning a, a raw infrastructure, you don't have to do that. We had to bring all of the components that we needed and the things that were already in place we had to integrate to. Which brings us to the next step, right? The real thing that people want to do is not tell a server to go through each step. What we really want is this desired state concept. So when we look at how people want to interact with infrastructure, they want to ask for the end thing, right? I want a ESXi server. I want a Kubernetes worker. I want um, a Windows server that's with all these pieces installed and joined to the, the domain. Perfectly reasonable thing. You ask for the final, final system. What Digital Rebar has to do is it has to back solve that whole task list. So it actually builds all of the steps that are necessary, even if it's multiple boots, even if it's talking to different systems, and then it goes and orchestrates that task list all the way through the process. Uh, Cloud Austin, we had some questions about this. This is actually designed to be incredibly simple. Uh, it's an operational system. You do not want mysteries. You don't want weird cyclic graphs. You don't want you know something that nobody can understand. We work really hard to take Give me a thing at the end, build a workflow that anybody can understand and keep it as linear as possible, and yet let it collect data and get input um, as, it, as it goes. So there's an interesting balance between making a very powerful workflow and also making it simple enough that operators can, can understand what's happening and troubleshoot it when something goes wrong. And so what happens during these workflows is you get a sequence of operations, but you also get consume and, and send data uh, all over the place. So you have inputs that you might say, I want my machine to be this version of the operating system with this version of the BIOS and this, this configuration. You're also gonna read data from the system, how will the inventory control of the system. You might need to pull in a token that you generate uh, during a configuration process or set a secure credential. And those things need to get stored back and then shared um, and in some cases ejected out. So if I'm building a Kubernetes cluster, I need my admin conf file and that's an output and that's gonna be stored in an API and retrievable by people with permission to retrieve that. So when you look at a workflow, it's not just that I've said, give me this state at the end. There's a lot of data that's generated and stored and interacted with throughout that process. And our goal with uh, continuously integrated data centers is that you have as much of that feeding through this pipeline as possible. In a lot of cases, you don't know information until the step before, and that's just how the, how the system is built, and it's actually desirable. If we're in a case where we're building an Ansible inventory that has all known information before we even start, then 
we really haven't solved an automated data center infrastructure. What we've really done is had a person spend a lot of time collecting information. And, and we all know from experience that that's often wrong and doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually help people in the end continue to maintain a, an integrated system on day two, which is really our objective. So from here, we decompose that workflow into smaller units. And in this case, I'm showing an ESXi install at a workflow level, but that workflow decomposes into a discover stage and an install stage, and the discover actually decomposes into smaller tasks, or net booting inventory BIOS updates, it's actually a lot more. Weasel, which is the ESX net boot install, net configurations that would happen after ESX is installed, right? So we've, we've taken this one thing I want, broken it down into smaller units. Each one of these units is actually infrastructure is code automation where we have Git control and we can manage the, the components. Uh, the thing that's important to us is not just that those are individual components, but they actually are very different components from a control infrastructure. So some of these tasks are net boot tasks where you're running it through a Pixie process. Some of them are agent tasks that are being run by a runner. Some of them might be out of band management where you're talking to a Redfish or a vendor's API. Some of them might be actually going back and using Python as a runner to take tasks in an ESX environment that's really restricted. And, and this is just a sampling. We have tasks that interact with external systems and active directories and DNS infrastructure and send data to CMDBs or just send posts to known locations. And that's a component of how things need to operate. So very typical in, in how all these pieces are, are put together. Um, and this is really different in our experience from anything else that's been built uh, because what you're doing is you're running a infrastructure as code workflow and then interacting with a lot of different systems. Terraform has some flavor of this in the fact that you can have a plan that talks to many different APIs and we find that's incredibly powerful. Uh, the extent to which we can actually talk through different um, API control points and, and like out-of-band management and in-band management um, is really unique. Uh, and then some of the new features in the 4.1 version of Digital Rebar actually allow you to switch context uh, and run in a container and move back and forth. Um, it's really powerful stuff. That's its own hour-long uh, discussion and, and lecture. Uh, and then going even one step further with this, the content catalogs are decomposed into smaller components. So while I'm showing you a whole bunch of modules here, we're actually breaking those modules into smaller and smaller units. So the content catalog that I'm showing you in blue is generic content catalog. The custom content has been modified where somebody has added in, say, a Windows install out of their CI CD infrastructure, built an image deploy, and then done post install, but then we're able to use standard components. And this is where we really look at reducing toil because you've been able to say, oh, I have a library of standard components, right? There is no gold star for doing your own BIOS configuration. A lot of people do it. Um, but there's very few business values to have custom BIOS configuration, right? We standardize that process. We improve it over time as, as more people find edge cases. Um, and there is no reason for anybody to spend a minute writing that themselves. And there's a, a deep library of things that we've built. It exactly like that burn in system verification, inventory management, uh, decommissioning workflows, classification, right? All of those things are really important to build a good process. They're not unique business value. And, and to the extent that we can allow people to package and reuse that, that's something we celebrate. The next layer up is this idea of deploying from source. So if you took an individual digital rebar, all of the pieces I showed you are composable parts. They all get stored in Git. They get managed. They're fundamentally YAML files. We have a process that bundles them together into a content pack. So instead of having to deal with 100 tasks and 40 parameters and a whole bunch of stages and workflows and all the pieces and parts that go into making up you know, a infrastructure as code, we actually have a bundler that creates that as a single content pack. So you store the, the parts and then you manage a single artifact to do those updates. And a normal configuration is made up of 10 to 12 different content packs, depending on what you wanted to implement, like RAID and BIOS configuration, Kubernetes, operating systems. Um, each one ends up being a content pack, and then everybody has a, their own custom thing for however they need their data center to run. 
But what that allows us to do is we take those content packs, we put them in S3, and then we create a catalog. So you can go shopping and literally say, oh, I need these capabilities in my data center. You pick the versions that you want because they're all versioned. And so you say, I need the latest version or I need a patch that's only in the, this you know, new current dev version. You pick those, you download them into your production deployment, and you go. Uh, and that's an amazingly powerful thing. So now you can actually create composable pieces set up a catalog and then reuse uh, all this stuff. It's super easy to do. And then that becomes part of this production install. And since it's separate from digital rebar, that means that they things have their own life cycle. So if somebody gives you a patch to the BIOS, then you can take that one patch. You don't have to update the whole system. Now, we have done some fun work too that allows you to patch uh, the systems in the field using the APIs of the systems uh, because this is production stuff and you don't want to have to log into anything to fix and deploy. That's, a, once again, another deep topic. And then finally, you get to the pipeline level. And, and Digital Rebar does not include a CI pipeline. There's amazingly powerful CI pipelines, and the infrastructure is just a small part of it. So what we've done for that is we've allowed CI CD pipelines to use the APIs that we expose, right? So you can build an image, run tests against that image, and get the results back from that pipeline, and then choose to do a broader deployment. To facilitate that, we have APIs that do pools, resource pools. So you can take machines, you can put them in a pool, and then treat that as a cloud uh, dynamic resource allocation. So you can say, I need a machine. Take a machine, it runs it through a workflow, delivers it to you in the state you expect do the work you want on it, and then release it from the pool, and it has a, a teardown workflow that resets it back and makes it available for the next operator or the next run. Um, that pooling behavior is very cloud-like, and that's one of the things that allows uh, cloud-like APIs to just sort of attach to the system and, and, and get running. But what I've shown you here is a stack. Um, you know, we've sort of blown through a lot of very powerful infrastructure as code functionality, but what we've really done here is built up this continuously integrated data center by sh by you know starting from programmatic in programmatic config, dynamic infrastructure, desired state, deploying from source, composable automation, and then finally just stitching on CI/CD, you really get this completely automated data center capability, um, and that's really important. That's that's what we've set out to build. Uh, not thinking, oh, this is infrastructure as code. We've been building this for five years, if you go back to some of our early attempts, 10 years of sort of refining these concepts, but infrastructure as code is what was needed. The concepts, these six core concepts are what was needed to build this continuously integrated data center. So I hope this was helpful. It's a lot of information presented very quickly. Um, please ask us questions, uh, interact with us. If you don't agree or you want more detail, um, I've already had some people uh, like John Willis raised up idempotency is a really important concept in, in some of these stages, and we're going to have a conversation with him. Uh, Mark Tilly has done some really interesting work in helping define con uh, continuously integrated data center in a much more concrete way, and, and then look at that from an edge topology perspective where you can't touch the infrastructure. And so he's been doing some amazing work here. Uh, definitely check out those two uh, very smart people. They're doing amazing stuff in this in, in the industry and, and really influences for us. Uh, you're invited to join us in the Digital Rebar community. Uh, the things that we're showing you are, you know, we have an open ecosystem and, and all these content packs and plugins and the way we do this stuff is open and available for you to check out. And of course, if you're interested in helping your data center be automated, check us out at RackN. Uh, it's what we do. We, we really change data centers in a fundamental, dramatic way, and we really change the ROI for running infrastructure yourself. Thank you.